hunting is part of who we are. When you're out there, your race, your politics, it doesn't matter. My mother and father gave me all these great gifts to help impact the world. And their legacy, to me, is using those to help other people. Focus on the things that bring us together. This is what it looks like when I say, I want to be a mentor. When I look back and think about the dogs that I've had, each dog would define a stage in my life. Shadow lived with me for 13 years, and that was kind of that understanding hunting culture, understanding the relationship you have with a dog. But that's also me from elementary school to college, is just growing up and finding my own way, finding my own path and understanding that I am unique in my own ways. My parents adopted me when I was around 18 months and I grew up in a mixed family. It's not easy growing up in a land that doesn't look like you, but I think it gives you that fortitude to be able to get through things that are difficult in life. And as I grew up and grew older, my father got us into hunting. It really took off when I was around 12 or 13 and I got Shadow. And after getting her, my passion for hunting really started to come out. Growing up through high school and college and law school and moving away, some of my happiest memories are always with my father in a field with a dog, always a black one. We have these opportunities in life and you need to take advantage of them. It's part of my parents' legacy to me and it's part of my legacy moving forward. All we care about is putting positive ripples out into the world and letting those things do what they do. When we're out there, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, purple, orange. If your dog does good, your dog does good. That's it, go home. <laughs> dog two, Shunka, Shunka Awar. A Lakota word for dog. And we added the Awar to connotate those Lakota warriors that were on the plains where I grew up in Nebraska. Shunka would probably be that real change to being a mature adult while also being able to process grief effectively. Shunka came to us as a promise to my father. He was diagnosed with cancer. The original diagnosis was pretty serious and I kind of put my life on hold to move home and be with him. Helped my father through all of his treatments. Towards the end when he started getting better, he told me, you gotta go do your thing. Go enjoy your career. You put yourself in this place to really become a good lawyer. So go back to Chicago and do it. And I told him I didn't want to leave home until he was better. And he said, take a dog with you. A dog that can continue this bond we have through hunting together. And that was our promise. Come back and bring me a dog when you come back next time and I will be here. I will finish up this cancer stuff. I will beat it. As Shunka got older, I was able to bring her back to my father. And to me, that was like a great success in life because my father made it through cancer, two bouts, and I was able to bring a dog home for him. Unfortunately, like that part in my life, I had to go through grief. I lost her at three and a half, and that broke me on the inside because I felt like I had failed my father. I didn't really have purpose in life. It's not what was supposed to happen. In an instant, I, I lost her in 30 hours. All that was gone. I was lost. I spiraled for a while thinking, what do you do? Everything that balances your life is gone. What do you do next? I needed something to kind of get me going again, something to reignite that internal fire. And Kutop was that thing that did it. Nakutop, which is Comanche for my fire. 
I love to hunt, so I love to scout, and when I'm scouting, I listen to podcasts. It's a good way to just burn time and hours and miles. There's a pheasant forever. I had a nice podcast with this guy. He goes on to talk about how he adopted a child from Ethiopia. We are talking to Eric Peterson, and it's the featured guest we've been alluding to. You know, from an upland perspective, I can't imagine Casa being able to claim upland hunting or find a space in that world unless we deliberately put role models in place or start including those people in our media and in our, you know, what we see in the world. I think he needs to be able to identify with other people of color who are pheasant hunting. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, well, I better Google Eric real quick to see what he looks like. It's a little, just not something you hear every day. And I was like, oh, he's a white guy, huh? And it keeps going and he talks about all these experiences he has with his sons and how they like to hunt. And then the episode turned a bit to where he talked about if Casa wanted to be a hunter, he should have role models. I think I can fill that void that he's looking for. I lived in a small town in Nebraska. You live in a small town in Montana. You're adopted in a mixed race family. There's gonna be bumps in the road. And Eric and all his altruism won't be able to understand what that's like all the way. And he can give them every gift in the world and my father gave me every gift in the world too. But there's just some things that if you're white, you just won't understand. And have someone else that understands that and you can talk through it, it just, it'll make it so much easier for him. After that, I reached out to him on social media and we got this idea to take this road trip up here and meet Eric and his son, Casa. He has long legs, I just realized. He does have long legs, they're good runners. To be able to impact people in positive ways is part of my legacy moving forward. That was a nice shot, Dad. Thank you. Dad and I got our stuff ready, started organizing all of our gear and getting the dog ready, and we hopped to the truck. First time in Montana. We've been to or I been, I went across Montana years ago, but didn't uh, spend any time here. Yeah, this is all different. Hey, hey. Welcome to Montana. How was it? We made it. Good. Yeah. Come on in. Fred, how you doing? Good. How was the drive? Good. Yeah, awesome. Hello. Good to see you. Awesome. Came a long ways to yeah. see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. She <laughs> is soft, isn't she? Is it a he or a she? She, nine months. Hi, Kuto. Meet Zeke. So almost a year old. Meet Zeke. Getting close, yeah. Nine months, yeah. Full of energy. Yeah. Just a lot of pup, a lot of pup left in there, though. <laughs> a lot of pup. Hi. <laughs> She is my inspiration. She is my motivation. She's what propels me to continue to move forward in this third phase of my life. It's this phase where I know what I can do, but also know that I have an obligation or my own duty to kind of give back. I am a black man in America. And growing up in the hunting space specifically, I've never really seen other black people in magazines, on TV. Being able to see that now is very impactful. I can see other people doing things that I am doing. And to me, it just feels like there's a community out there now that looks like me, that I can just relate to because of our skin color. And now that's not everything, but it's just nice to see that representation across the board. You see it in so many other things. I mean, you look at professional sports, entertainers, actors, to be able to have a judge up there that's a black guy to think, you know what, maybe I could do that. It just gives you something to strive for.
Never let race be an excuse for you not succeeding in life. That's what he would always tell me. No matter what. I remember I'd come home and be sad about something. Not an excuse. And that's kind of how I am now. Like, yeah, the world sees me as a black man, but cool. That's good. Check it at the door. We're going to do other stuff. We're fine. It's never going to be a reason I don't succeed. Shoot as quick as you can. I know, I know, I know, it's hard. Just do your best. If you see one, pull up and shoot, even if you don't think you're gonna hit it. Just give it a try. The world is not a fair place. There's gonna be times where things come knocking at his door that he is not ready for and doesn't want to handle. I hope that he doesn't shy away from that, but he turns to people that care about him to help reframe those things for him. Race brought us together, but it's not what defines this relationship. So what else do we like? Hunting, family, faith, being outside. That's what really brings us together. I think when I look back, Shadow helped me grow up. Shunka helped me become an adult and know my place in the world. And little Kuto keeps me burning bright and showing me that I'm at a place where I can start giving back both to her and other people that come in our path. I hope Casa can continue his own journey to put those positive ripples out into the world. Because if I can do it now, I believe he can do it after me. And two of us is better than one. <laughs>